Hello nerd! Today we are continuing with the Primark Homeworld series. We ended up with the Lion and Caliban. I have to remind you that we are going through the list in chronological order, meaning we are looking at the Primark Homeworlds in the same order they were found. Having said that, I think there is no more time to waste because you already know what's up. If you haven't seen the previous videos then be sure to check them out. So make sure you are subscribed, join the discord and without further ado, let's dig in. There is only war. Now the next one in the line to be found was grumpiest of all the Primarchs, Perturabo. He was found on Olympia, located in Ultima Segmentum. It was an ancient human colonized world, positioned diametrically opposed from Terra across the galactic core. It was part of a cluster of worlds believed to have been heavily settled in the Dark Age of Technology. Emerging from the Age of Strife relatively untouched, Olympia witnessed a regression in scientific knowledge and industry, reverting to a fractured pre-atomic industrial state. Despite its abundance of organic and various minerals, Olympia's technological advancement was close to non-existent. The problem was that much of its more valuable resources and easily accessible conductive metals had been depleted through ancient strip mining operations, restricting the planet's technological evolution. Olympia was blanketed in mountainous landmasses, creating even more challenges, rendering large-scale urbanization and agriculture impractical. This distinctive environment created a diverse array of independent city-states, locked in perpetual power struggle over fertile valleys, expansive plateaus and resource-rich mines. In a sense, a predatory society emerged on Olympia, driven by pursuits of wealth, security and dominance. The art of war flourished culminating in unparalleled expertise in fortress building, siegecraft and stone masonry. Power on Olympia lay not only in seizing resources, but in defending them. Massive keeps guarding crucial passes and fortified citadels protecting wealth and provisions became the pinnacle of military strategy and rulership, embodied by 12 most formidable city-states known as the Tyrants of Olympia. Warfare in this fractious realm was a multifaceted affair, blending political subterfuge, assassination and direct confrontation. The warlords, indebted to the wealthiest tyrants, owed their loyalty to the purses of their benefactors, whose authority rested on possession, bribery and fear. It was into the court of one such tyrant, Damikos of Locos, where Perturabo was raised. He was found scaling the mountains near Locos. Perturabo's exceptional abilities caught Damico's attention. He tested the boy's prowess in combat and intellect, witnessing his remarkable skills in both domains. Despite his reserved demeanor, Perturabo absorbed the culture of Olympia, mastering the art of siege warfare amid the continuous conflicts between the city-states. As it is with every Primarch, Perturabo, renowned for his military prowess and inventive genius, transformed Locos into dominant force through innovative weaponry and strategic brilliance. Shortly later, the Emperor arrived. Next Primarch to be found was our smelly boy Mortarian. His homeworld, Barbarus, was a world shrouded in perpetual darkness and toxic mists, and it was considered among the most inhospitable of all the planets where the Primarchs were scattered. I think this is what makes it kinda obvious why Nurgle picked him. Situated in the Segmentum Tempestus, its dim yellow sun barely penetrated the thick, noxious atmosphere, casting the world into eternal gloom. The toxic gases in the atmosphere created an environment devoid of starlight, with brief, dim days. The place was just nasty and gloomy. Little is known for certain about Barbarus and Mortarian's early life there, as the truth was carefully obscured, possibly by the Emperor himself even. The most reliable accounts of Mortarian's origins come from the Stygian scrolls of Lackland Thorn, written by a remembrancer attached to the crusade fleet that ventured into the dark nebulae surrounding Barbarus. Barbarus kind of symbolizes the horrors of the Age of Strife, with savage alien overlords ruling over human population as cruel tyrants. Humans could only survive in the lower parts of the planet, where the air was somewhat breathable. The alien rulers, immune to the planet's toxic atmosphere, dwelled in great stone fortresses atop the jagged mountains. People there lived in pre-feudal state due to the harsh environment conditions and the dominance of the alien overlords. These beings possessed incomprehensible war-based powers, surviving where humans could not 
and preying upon them with insatiable hunger. Humans regarded them with medieval superstition and feared their influence, attributing to them an evil rooted in the supernatural realm of the Empyrean, something akin to demons and wizards. We will never know what were these overlords, what species or even how they looked. Some believe they could be slot, but who knows. Essentially, barbarous is what happens when you leave a car running in the garage with the doors closed. Then our preachy boy, Lorgar, was found on Colchis. It was one of the more ancient worlds settled during the mankind's expansion into the stars. Situated in the Segmentum Pacificus, near the border of Segmentum Obscurus, its continents were adorned with massive ruins, whose purpose remains unknown despite extensive exploration. With the size three times that of Terra and small population, Colchis rotated slowly around its sun, its days lasting ten on weeks. The landscape, dominated by unforgiving mountain ranges and desolate desert plains intersected by winding rivers, bore witness to the rise of humanity's earliest civilizations. The first inhabitants of this world lived together with men of iron. During the Great Crusade, Mahanicus explorators traced Colchis settlements back to the 16th millennia. Despite its advanced technological status during the Dark Age of Technology, the world descended into anarchy during the Age of Strife, regressing into a pre-industrial feudal society. There are fragmented records of Colchis post-apocalyptic society, describing religious caste known as the Covenant that reshaped Colchis shattered civilization with a promise of deliverance by a prophesied leader. I wonder who that is. Yet, unlike other worlds of the Imperium, Colchis lacked extensive orbital defenses and void stations, relics of its forgotten technological era. The planet's surface bore scars of ancient devastation, with ruins hinting at once mighty empire. Of course, Lorgar turned it into a massive church and nothing else. The fastest Primarch in the universe, Jagadai Khan, landed on Chigoris. In the Imperial records, it is known as Mundus Planus, situated in the Ultima Segmentum. Chagoris presented a landscape of fertile lands adorned with lush greenery, towering mountains and azure seas. Despite its natural beauty, the planet had developed a level of technology akin to the late medieval or early renaissance periods of old Earth's history, marked by the recent introduction of black powder weapons. They had discovered guns! America! Fuck yeah! Chagoris was dominated by a feudal aristocracy led by the Palatine, who had extended their rule over the majority of planet with formidable pre-industrial armies. These armies, comprising armored horsemen and tightly packed infantry formations, had secured victory in every campaign waged by the Palatine. You can compare them to Mongolians. Next to Palatine's empire was a vast windswept field known as the Empty Quarter, inhabited by nomadic tribes of fierce horsemen. These tribes, adept in horseback riding and archery, engaged in frequent conflicts over territory and honor, perpetuating a cycle of seasonal migration between summer pastures and winter valleys. While the Palatine's realm had never ventured into the empty quarter due to its perceived lack of value, the feudal nobles often conducted hunting expeditions into the region, capturing tribespeople for slavery or engaging in sports hunts through the mountainous terrain. The sacred text of the Weisskar's chapter, The Great Khan, offers vivid descriptions of the atrocities committed by the Palatine's agents against the tribes of Chagoris. References to blood rituals and sacrifices depicted in these writings have led some imperial scholars to speculate about the possibility of the Palatine Empire being influenced by Kes, and if you start digging, you'll have the same assumptions. Of course, as it is with most of the Primarchs, Jagadai Khan as a Chad united the tribes, created an army and defeated Palatine. He took over Chigoris and later on the Emperor arrived, and the rest is history. You know, I think it kinda goes without saying, if you go against Primarch on a feudal world, then that can be considered as an assisted suicide. But what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to join the Discord server and if you enjoy my video then leave a like and subscribe to my channel with the notifications on so you wouldn't miss my latest upload. And if you really want to support me then consider becoming a member for just $1 by clicking on the join button right below the video title or visit my Patreon, link is in the video description. By doing so you will gain access to members only polls to vote on upcoming video topics and you will get a pretty cool badge added to your name whenever you make a comment so you can even flex a bit. Also, you'll be featured as a supporter on my main channel page and every chapter master in all my video descriptions. With that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd!